But I'm delighted that uh, Peter Kirsten has, has joined me now. Peter will in a moment moderate the panel on uh, tokenization and the role of unlocking efficiency uh, in European capital markets, or as Berina says, squeeze, squeeze out the last bit of additional efficiency that can be squeezed out of the markets. But, but Peter, maybe to you, what do you hope to get out of this panel and why do you think this particular issue is so important? I asked that question because Verena said, yes, it's important, but we're not quite there yet as to what to do about it. And we're not sure how far we can go. And we don't really quite know how, how robust the technology is. I paraphrase, but I think it's a fair paraphrasing for her. So, you know, as we look into the next commission agenda, you know, why do you think this is an important issue? I think it's an important issue and tokenization or the use of distributed ledger technology uh, in traditional financial markets and securities markets, I think is important because we've come a long way uh, already um, in bringing more efficiency, but there's still a number of issues and a number of, of requirements of an institutional nature or legal requirements. Also, while they have uh, definitely stability um, dividends, they may have uh, efficiency uh, downsides. And so we want to explore whether uh, tokenization or the use of distributed ledger technology in traditional financial asset classes does that hold a lot of potential. There's a lot of talk about it, but what really is this potential? And if there is so much potential about this, well, why doesn't the industry just get on with it? Uh, is it just that they have to get familiar with the, with the technology still, a bit like we've seen with other issues, like, for example, cloud, um, about eight, nine years ago when I started working in this area, um, most financial institutions said, well, cloud is not really for us. Uh, we don't really want to engage in that. But now they're all moved to a cloud first. And with this, we, we see the same with distributed ledger technology and crypto a bit. When we did the Mika regulation, for example, and the, the ideas for the Mika regulation, which date back from 2018, at that stage, serious or what I would say respectable financial institutions, uh, to call them that way, wouldn't want to be called dead near anything to do with distributed ledgers. And I said, no, 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 we're not going to uh, get into that space. So we did Mika for the non-financial uh, instruments. But now we see, we did do a DLP pilot so to test um, if they could um, use this technology a bit. But we see a lot of industry interest now in this tokenization. Uh, especially because they uh, will we'll see whether the, the, the panel will confirm this, they see enormous opportunities in cost saving and in unlocking uh, liquidity through tokenization. And if that opportunity is really there and if there is an extra step to be taken to create a capital markets union, uh, a digital capital markets union, we of course will not let that opportunity uh, lay there, but we will seize that opportunity if it exists. That makes total sense. I think when I spoke to Verena, I, I kind of gave three excuses or reasons for the slow adoption. And maybe that helps with the panel or not. Mm -hmm. I think one of them is, how do I put it? Effectively, the, the, as you say, the uncertainty of knowledge about the technology and how it will perform. And particularly how it will perform in a stressed situation. The second one is that it's fine if I want to adopt DLT, but if my neighbor, my, my counterparty doesn't, or if my counterparty in a different part of the world doesn't, and they prefer to go to T plus one, for example, how do I network myself into that? And the final one might or might not be some issues around regulatory uncertainty, public policy uncertainty, or, or lack of supervisory understanding, I think, also how the current framework can be applied in those contexts. I don't know whether that makes sense to you, whether you've got similar feelings, uh, reactions from the discussions that you've been having. Yes, uh, very much so. These are the, the three issues. Indeed, getting familiar um, with the technology, so being confident that this will perform. And I think we've reached a stage where a number of industry players say, well, look, this technology is developed enough, it's good enough, uh, so we can really start going into beyond testing, but into production stage. 
But of course, it takes two to tango, and often it takes many more because uh, and so other market participants also need to uh, jump onto this 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 new paradigm, um, which is sometimes away from centralized service providers. Um, could be permissionless, could be permission systems. Um, then there's a question is that, well, which asset class? So there, people say, well, it's not, it doesn't lend itself equally well for every asset class. Now, why one asset class is better suited than the other for distributed ledger technology is still a bit of a mystery to me, but uh, I hear it often that people say, well, this asset, illiquid assets uh, are much better suited for distributed ledger than, for example, uh, equities. And, um, there's that issue, some regulatory issues, although we still try to figure out what precisely those regulatory issues that then are. And is it uncertainty? Is it unclarity? Is it a real barrier? And then finally, an issue which you didn't mention, but which comes up a lot, is that there needs to be cash on ledger. There needs to be either vast amounts of commer tokenized commercial bank money, vast amounts of stable coins, or vast amounts of central bank digital currency on the ledger to work also uh, allow to do the, the cash leg of the transactions. If you can't do the cash leg of the transactions, there's ultimately little point in doing distributed ledger technology based uh, financial assets. Yeah, it's interesting you say that. And, and as we're about to bring in the panelists, let me maybe just ask you one or two other questions, which is, I mean, we have a panel later on kind of the role of cross-border payments and the role that CBDCs can play in that. And, among it, a colleague from the Bank of England will present a paper in a consultation response to the digital pound that was published two days ago, I think. And it's interesting, even the UK is thinking more about a retail application, even though, as you say, a wholesale application would be much more, much more transformative in securities markets. And given that London's GDP is not insignificantly influenced by the city, it's an interesting one. We'll see what they will say, but I think your point you make about the cash lag is interesting. Uh, there is frustration, I think, in the industry as well that we're spending a lot of time on the retail digital euro, but have not yet really started. I know there's now some pilots, but we haven't really started looking at the wholesale digital euro. So I guess the two things are quite linked, isn't it? You can't really move on tokenized securities unless the ECB moves on wholesale digital euro applications. I think that is uh, correct. Well, of course, you could do it to a certain extent also with private stable coins, but they have, of course, there's a number of reservations around that. You could do tokenized commercial bank money, but there are also reservations around that. And then there's also, but we'll hear also from, from the ECB, um, who is on the panel, uh, on whether or not um, the central bank wants to play a role, as it always feels that... Um, these very large systems really should run on central bank money. And if these systems were to move to a distributed ledger-based uh, platform, partly move to that, does the ECB uh, and other central banks feel the calling or feel the need uh, that that's uh, done um, with central bank money? Now, of course, that may be a bit of a chicken and an egg story because the market may not develop in the absence or may not scale in the absence of central bank money. So, and for as long as the markets are relatively small, the need to have central bank money in these systems may be less outspoken. That really is a question for central bankers more than it is a question for me.